Hi, I'm Kyle Cohan, the owner of Wingzone. We're proud to be associated with the Pat Dooley Show. Check us out at wingzone.com or come see us downtown on University Avenue. All right, welcome to the latest edition of the Pat Dooley Show. Yeah, I know you're surprised to see this show on this week, and I am too, to be honest with you. But I was told to come on here, so here I am. All right, I am, and I'm wearing the fleece instead of the jacket because it's always about 20 degrees colder in the building than it is outside, so I had to, get, I had to stay warm. Warmth is important. Hopefully everybody had it. Hopefully you're not watching this on Thanksgiving Day. Hopefully you're with your families. Friday, if you're watching it, I'll let you have that. I hope you're, you had a great Thanksgiving if that's the case. Obviously, Florida is hoping to have a great Thanksgiving weekend when they play Florida State. I could talk about FIU, but what's the point? That was a bad team. Three and seven, now three and eight. Look, uh, you know, they had some players, but not enough. And certainly Florida took care of business. And I, I thought what Urban said was pretty good. How, you know, his team could easily have let down for that game, but instead they came out and practiced as hard as ever. And you got to give them credit for that. It's a sign of a mature professional team. Now we'll see if they can get past this last hurdle before going to the SEC championship game. And, of course, that's the Florida State Seminoles, a team that hasn't been very good all year. Good on offense, even with E.J. Manuel in there, but not very good on defense. Uh, you know, this is going to be a really weird Saturday, I think, for everybody. You know, with, in, in terms of Tim Tebow's last game, Bobby Bowden's last game at the Swamp, Mickey Andrews' last game at the Swamp, Brandon Spike's last game at the Swamp, a lot of laughs going on. It'll be interesting to see the eye black and what different people wear. Uh, maybe the most creative we should feature on this show next week. Maybe we will. We'll see. But the bottom line is, is going to be a lot of emotion, and Florida's got to kind of put that aside. Okay, love you, going to miss you. Go beat FSU. That's what they've got to do. FSU is a very dangerous team because they have the offensive firepower to beat Florida. But I still don't believe Florida will lose if they don't turn over. Bobby Bowden said as much on his, in his Sunday uh, breakfast last week when he said, look, we're hoping for turnovers. That's the way to beat them. Of course, last year they hoped it would rain. How did that work out? Not too well. But I think the key for Florida is just go out and do the things you do well. Win the game 27-17 and go to Atlanta. That's all you need to do. And we'll see if they can. Certainly, all these seniors are going to be missed. And probably some juniors, too. Uh, I think Hayden, Hernandez, Dunlap probably definitely gone. Then we'll see about the pound season. I, uh, Major Wright and Chris Rainey, believe it or not, have actually expressed an interest in at least finding out where they stand. I'm a little surprised at that. Uh, but they are, so we'll see where they all go. But you think about these seniors, and I wrote about Stamper and Nelson this week, two guys who bought the Kool-Aid when it was not tasting so sweet. Part of that first class of Urban Myers, most of it's gone, with the exception of Jonathan Phillips and uh, Dorian Monroe, who hadn't played in two years. But uh, for those two guys, they, they've gotten better, they've improved every year, they've fought, they've toughed it out. And you got, I like both those guys a lot, great kids. You look at Jermaine Cunningham, not the most talkative guy in the world, but he certainly is a, a tremendous performer, has meant a lot. You think about, it's all going to be Tebow, I know, for a lot of people on Saturday. But this senior class, more wins than any team in the history of the SEC, two national championships already, a chance for a third, a couple of SECs, three SEC East titles. It's been an amazing run. You should be as loud as you've ever been on Saturday. I'm just, that's my advice to you Gator fans. All right, we're going to go now and look at the three things I learned over the weekend. All right, the three things I learned this weekend, number one, Urban's not going anywhere. Trust me, people, on this. You know, I've had a lot of conversations with him and with Shelly. And look, they love it here. Why can nobody accept the fact that they love it here and that they don't want to go where it's cold in the, in the winter and where the, you have to recruit nationally and where the facilities aren't as good? They've built something great here. Everybody keeps saying uh, Urban's got Notre Dame in his heart because he's Catholic. We have Catholic churches. I think I've mentioned that before. I've seen them. I've been in them. We have them here. But, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just don't think he's going to. Now they say, well, okay, not Notre Dame, NFL. No, I don't think so. Urban's a very smart guy, and he's got a great recruiting class already built up. It could be one of the best in the country. Trust me, people. Of course, the last time I said that to you was, trust me, Billy Donovan is not going to the Magic. And he didn't. Of course, he did, but then he didn't. So I was wrong and right, I think, on that. All right, number two thing I learned over the weekend, I'm not betting against Tim Tebow in the NFL. And, and, you know, Jimmy Johnson, not the race car driver, but the former coach, said this week on several shows that Tim Tebow uh, won't be an NFL quarterback. And, okay, yeah, they said he couldn't be a good college quarterback, too. And in high school, his dad was telling me, that. everybody said, ah, you're too big to play quarterback in high school. You're, we'll put you somewhere else. 
Try, you know, I, I used to look at Tim Tebow and I go, look, I'm not betting against you, bud. See how you do. I think you'll, you'll play. You know, I think you'll be a quarterback. I think you'll have a career. I don't know if you'll be a pro bowler. In fact, I kind of doubt that. But I think Tim Tebow will play in the NFL, and I think he'll play quarterback. You want to bet against him, go ahead. See where that gets you. So far, I hadn't gotten anybody very far. And the number three thing I learned over the weekend is there's going to be a new sitcom out starting next fall. It's going to be called My Name is Less. And it's going to be about how karma comes about and beats you. Because if you saw the game uh, Saturday night, obviously, with, between Ole Miss and LSU, all those boneheaded moves that Les Miles did in 2007 and won a national championship because somehow they worked, well, this time it didn't. You don't spike the ball with a second to go, Lessie. You also do not let 17 seconds run off the clock when you're trying to win a game and you're, you need it bad. And you don't call a pass when you're on the 32 and you only need a field goal to win the game. And certainly, of all those things, you tell Jordan Jefferson, you don't take a sack, you got to get rid of the ball. You can't do that. So just a total uh, cluster on that last series. And uh, my name is Les. It's coming to you. I think um, Jason Lee will be playing the, the part of Les Miles. All right, that's going to do it for three things I learned this weekend. We're going to come back with the guy who threw the biggest pass in the history, the history, I'm telling you, of the Florida FSU game. Can you guess who it is? Huh? Come on, come on. Anybody out there? You, sir. No, that's incorrect. You'll find out who it is when you come back. The Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone, locally owned and operated, featuring 15 award-winning flavors. Count on Wing Zone for all of your tailgating needs. Call or order online at wingzone.com. Call for daily lunch specials. Ask about our 2 for 12 special. All right, welcome back to the Pat Dooley Show. We're here with our special guest, Doug Johnson, an appropriate guy to have because you might have thrown the most famous pass in Florida FSU history. It was a special one. It was one we drew in the dirt. Yeah, I know. You told me the story once that you got into the huddle after Steve had drawn it up and figured it out, and then when you got there, he went, does anybody know what we're doing? And everybody said no. Well, Coach got on his little uh, sheet and started drawing stuff, and, and by the time the play clock ran down, he looked at everybody and said, all right, does everybody understand what they got? Everybody said, yeah, because everybody, no one wanted to say no, so we got back in the huddle. And I said, everybody know what they're doing? And everybody in the huddle said, no. I said, all right. I called uh, the protection, called the formation, called the snap count. And I said, just get to the line, and I'll give you something. So Quez ran a good what route. What did you tug on your head? Was that the yeah, uh, fucking that was, go? That was, yeah, just the face mask signal. And we got Samari on it. And, and I played with Samari uh, in Tennessee uh, with the Titans. And, I always mess with him about that, so it was good, good stuff. When you let that ball go, I mean, what are you thinking? Are you thinking I knew it was right it's there. It's perfect. Yeah, well, you know, when, when you're a quarterback, you always I – mean, when you let one go, you know if it's going to be right. there or not. So um, I let it go. I knew it was there, and Quez just ran out of gas. He should have scored. I know. <laughs> well, he had asthma, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll and then, you know, little. Fred gets – he gets all the – uh, the game ball with the touchdown at the end. You know, he gets all the highlights. Yep. So. Don't forget he fumbled twice in that game. Yeah, too. it was a good game. It was, it was a great game. Yeah. One of the best ever played at the Swamp. And, and certainly you, though, weren't a big fan of the alternating quarterbacks, I know, for that game. No, still not. I think it's a terrible, terrible system. Uh, it worked one time, and, but you don't, you don't do that to your, to your known leader on the team and to your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your signal caller. I mean, you you got to leave a guy out there, let him play. And, um, but, it, you know, it worked that game, luckily, and, um, and everybody will remember it. But as you can see, that, that kind of system usually doesn't work. Right. If it did, everybody would be doing That's it. That's right? right. Well, what, how would you describe your relationship with Steve then and now? Um, I, I tell you, I wouldn't have traded it uh, for the world. I, I think I learned a lot. Um, I tell you, it was a fun offense to be a part mm -hmm. of. He called plays at certain – times during the game that nobody in the country would call, which was great. Um, you know, that, that was why it was fun to be a part of. Um, and, I, you know, I got to play against him in the league. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, one game. And I covered that game, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it was a – they ended up winning. We, we blew a huge halftime lead. and um, But, you know, he came over and gave me a hug. And I've seen him recently and uh, visited with him. And uh, him and Jerry. And Jerry's great. Love Jerry. So, um, like Does I said – Does anybody not like Jerry? Is there anybody in the world? I think that's a trademark of a coach's wife. Yeah. I, t I tell you, behind the scenes, a great coach always has a wife uh, that's keeping his orders and affair. And that's, you know, with, with, with Urban, I mean, Shelly sure. Meyer, I mean, you, you'd be amazed at the stuff she does. Yeah. So. No, no I, I actually was just talking to her yesterday about some of that. 
and you have a great relationship going with Urban. You live across the bay from him at Melrose Bay. Uh, now he's he only vacations there, but you you live right. out there, right? Yeah, and we you know we've come to know each other, and we're good friends now. And uh, I, I work with the QBs in the off season, and I've been able to de uh, develop a great relationship with Timmy and and JB, and and it's it's been good. I think they they obviously got a great one now, and mm -hmm. I think they're going to have a great one coming in. So Florida fans are blessed to have that. And but it's uh you know it's just part of a family. It's great to be a part of this kind of family. Um, when you leave, you don't really realize it when you're here, but when you leave, I mean, the Florida football family is it's huge and it's great to be a part of. You know, next week Florida goes up to Atlanta to play in the SEC championship game, and the and one of my memories that stays with me forever was the '99 game when the game's ready to start, and here comes Jesse Palmer at quarterback, and I'm like, what in the world is he alternating? What's he doing? We had no idea you had blown out, not blown out, but your shoulder was just torn well, up. Well, I couldn't, you know, we got to pregame and I didn't throw that entire week. And a lot of people don't know. I mean, I s basically just stuck it out the entire season, right. did whatever I had to do to play in those games um, and got to the SEC game and just could not throw. Could, the ball just couldn't come out of my hand. I mean, it was so bad. <clears throat> so I told coach before the game, I said, I I just I can't get it done. I'm, I'm you know I'm sorry. I mean it was crushing to me. I gave up baseball that that summer uh, to concentrate on my senior year. We got to where we wanted to get to, and not to be able to play in that game and then end up losing uh, was was a bad deal. But didn't they give you a cortisone shot at halftime and you tried to go out there? Tried and, tried to do everything. I remember you see the, like the first pass just went to the ground. Went to the ground. <laughs> I, I mean I you know coach came up to me at halftime and said you got to do whatever you can do to get in this game and I said absolutely whatever you think and. Um, so went out there in halftime and uh, played the got the first uh, play of the first series and tried to throw a hitch route and <laughs> took myself out of the game. Uh, <laughs> it was just embarrassing. But yeah, that's a, you know that's probably one of the more disappointing yep. you know parts of a of my life as far as an athlete. So but you know we got to where we wanted to go to and um, everything happened for a reason. Well, certainly the '98 game at, at Tallahassee was remembered for a lot of reasons. One of them was the pregame fight. And uh, there's this, there's always been this story going around that, you, that Spurrier came up to you and try, told you to try to hit Bowden with a football. Uh, that's completely false. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know that's it was an unfortunate incident in that game. Um, we got two of our best players yeah, thrown out of the game. Jones and right, and you know it's just we kind of had a similar incident the, the year before, and we talked about it before the game. Just don't get involved in that. Um, they're not as good as we are, and. They're going to do anything they can to, to, you know, for something like that to happen. We actually talked about that um, before the game and didn't you know, sink in. Apparently. Didn't sink in. You know, motions are flying, and uh, you know, just terrible. We we lost two players before the game. Yeah, I still think if Gerard Warren falls on that ball in the end zone, it's over. I mean, even though that was in the first half, they got they only gave up two points. You knew Alson was going to make a turnover there at some point. And of course, Mark Juan Manuel couldn't hold on to that ball. And oh, yeah, it was a tough game. I tell you, that's probably one of the bitter losses that I mm -hmm. that that I can think of as a player. That we got beat by a team that was nowhere near as good as we were, and that's you know that's just hard. Usually in football, the better team is going to win 90% yeah. of the time, and it's just one of those deals where, it, looking back, all the things you you should have done in that game, and we had a, I mean, we had a good game plan, but we just didn't execute. Well, and certainly the better team is Florida again this week yes. when they play on Saturday. And I'm just curious, what you as a drop back pass, you played in the league, and you watched Tim Tebow, and you watched this offense, and what your thoughts are on this offense and on Tim and his future in the NFL? <clears throat> well, I, I think that everybody has their ways of, of running an offense. I think there's different ways of skinning the cat. Um, <clears throat> I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of hard because a lot of fans were, they're used to the, the way it was right, and then right. that was successful and then to come in and do a whole different way it's kind of it's hard to it's hard to change what their perception of how an offense is but it's very successful uh steve adazio is a, a great offensive mind i mean he can he can call a good game he knows i mean he has a mindset in in his mind as far as how to call a a conservative game not turn the ball over and that's what they do they don't turn the ball over um, they they get their chunks when they when they need to get their chunks and you know they fit that offense around what Timmy does best and that's lead and not turn over and make big throws when he has to you know when when JB gets in there they it'll be different they, yeah. I think no it'll be different yeah. they'll have to change some stuff obviously 
Um, I don't think he's going to be a threat on the, on the option keep. I don't even think they're going to acknowledge that threat. Um, I think that you know the, the, the keep man can play him and play the, and play the pitch guy and, and be able to react on the quarterback. So they're going to they're going to have to change some stuff up on that end, but and they know that. But um, I think the offense has fit Timmy great. Um, he's been able to get the the ball into the playmakers' hands right. quick. That's the, the key to that offense. They they get it into the Dimps' hands quick. The Percy Harvins. They just get the ball to them. Don't make it complicated and let them win the game. And that's what they do. Well, that's going to do it for our segment with Doug Johnson. We're going to bring him back in just a minute for either or. I know you can't wait for that. But right now, it's time for the latest list. The Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone, locally owned and operated, featuring 15 award-winning flavors. Count on Wing Zone for all of your tailgating needs. Call or order online at wingzone.com. Call for daily lunch specials. Ask about our two for twelve special. All right, it's time for my latest list, and of course, it being Thanksgiving, I have the five things I'm most thankful for. Number five is how lucky I am to cover the University of Florida. Sometimes it's difficult to cover this team and cover this program because they aren't the greatest with access. But when you think of the rewards, uh, a week at the uh, at, down in Miami at the Harbor Beach Marriott, a week in Glendale at the uh, unbelievable Camelback Hotel up there, and if they can get to Pasadena, Newport Marriott Spa and Resort. I like covering the Gators. It's not bad. And of course, we had those great runs covering uh, the basketball team as well. Some your Marriott rewards points get pretty high. But seriously, it's really been fun to cover a team that's always in the mix. You know, sometimes it gets difficult when national reporters think they know everything. But the bottom line is I really enjoy covering this team. Uh, number four, uh, I'm thankful that they moved the SEC game from Birmingham to Atlanta a long time ago. I, one of my favorite things in the world is to cover that game, even if Florida's not in it. I covered the LSU-Tennessee game. I covered the Tennessee-Mississippi State game. So that's a great press box. You're low. It's a, it's a beautiful indoor arena. You're in Atlanta, vibrant city. Birmingham, outdoors, crappy stadium. Yeah, I like Birmingham okay. It's, it's not bad, but it doesn't compare to Atlanta. So I am very thankful that Roy Kramer went to a Peach Bowl game in 1993 and went, hey, we should be playing here. Yeah, thank you very much, Roy. Number three. I'm thankful very much for the BCS. Wait a minute. Who put that? Ari, Ari Fleischer put that in here. Come on, Ari. He's been hired as their uh, media consultant, by the way. Number two I'm thankful for is that there's still new music. I started doing this thing in the back nine where at the end I, I give you a music tip, and the great thing about it is they're coming back. People are, are, are sending me uh, downloads that I need to get or different groups I need to check out. The Evett Brothers was my latest. That's great stuff, and I appreciate all that. And the great thing is when you're as old as I am, Dirt is second to me. When you're as old as I am, you think everything's been written, every song, every angle, every sound, and it's just not true. It's never going to be true. And I really love kind of discovering new music with my little girl, Kelsey. And number one, I'm most thankful for is family, and I hope everybody else out there is too. You know, I just went and saw my parents this week, and uh, it was a real lift. Even though both of them are hanging in there in the eight, their 80s, um, just to be around them and... and realize the love and see the love and, and see the love in their eyes and in my eyes and just how I felt about them kind of was very uplifting. Same way when I go home or when I get back from a trip and my little girl runs out to me and hugs me or when my wife does something special for me or my daughter, other daughter who's uh, coming down. I don't want to get all weepy on you, but I, family is what matters. That's what counts in this world. You know, and I was talking to somebody about this the other day. With a guy like Tim Tebow, you know, his family, talking to his family about him, it, th that is why he's great. It's because of his family, what they've made him into as a person. Forget the football, as a person. And just think about it today. Think about Saturday. Saturday's an important game for Florida, but your family's still going to be there. All right, that's going to do it for the list. We're going to come back. Doug Johnson's going to rejoin me. We're going to do either or. The Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone, locally owned and operated, featuring 15 award-winning flavors. Count on Wing Zone for all of your tailgating needs. Call or order online at wingzone.com. Call for daily lunch specials. Ask about our 2 for 12 special. All right, it's time for Either Or with Doug Johnson. And uh, Doug, tell the people what you're doing now. I know you've, uh, after the long career in the NFL, you've kind of moved on to a different profession. Yeah, I'm with Johnson and Fletcher Insurance now, commercial insurance here in town, and um, I retired last year from the league and kind of 
opened up the next chapter of my life, so it's been good. You saved the money, though, right? Oh, yeah. All, all those big contracts? <laughs> That's good. All right, it's time to play either or with Doug, and let's go to the first one. Bigger rivalry for you, Georgia or Florida State? That is a no-brainer. Uh, I, I never thought Georgia was really a rivalry mm -hmm. when I was there, just really? because, I mean, even when, you know, my first year here, my true freshman year, we beat them so bad, and <clears throat> I know it's just a fun game for the fans. We did stumble in 97. 97 yeah. Um, but still then, I mean, every year it was like we expect to beat Georgia. And I think you have the Florida States and the Tennessees where we know we should win, but we need to, we need to come to the game and ready to play. So um, I definitely think it's Florida State. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking to Steve today, Steve Spurrier, and he said we were talking about his – because Bowden's last game, of course, is Saturday at, at the Swamp, last game of the Swamp. I'm not trying to get you rid of it yet, Bobby. <laughs> but um, – you know, he was saying how good they were back then. And, and of course, that's one luxury yeah. that Urban has, that they aren't as good right they now. They are not the team that we used to play. I can tell you that yeah. right now. But, you know, they still have a lot of talent they do. out there. So you got to respect that. All right, number two on either or, better post-corner route runner, my favorite pattern that Steve came up with, mm -hmm. Travis McGriff or Travis Taylor? I would probably have to say Travis McGriff for the fact that, you know, when you're coaching receivers, you always coach them to – to give an indicator to put your foot in the ground to let the right. quarterback know when to let it go. And TT, you know, that's Travis Taylor. <laughs> he would always kind of round it a little bit. Mm -hmm. He was so fast and physical. And just run away from the corner. And Griff always knew that, you know, he was kind of an undersized guy, so he had to do everything else right. So every every route was precise. He gave indicators. He gave he put his foot in the ground, came out the right angle. So I tell you, Travis. McGriff was one of the more enjoyable players that I've played with. I mean, he was a hard, tough guy. I mean, just one of those guys, when you look in his eyes in the huddle, you know he's going to have your back. So, really enjoyed playing with Travis. And, of course, had a great year that year. And then Travis Taylor had the great Orange Bowl afterwards. Right. So and it, Travis Taylor is just a remarkable talent. And um, he had that big body and uh, could really run after a catch. So, he was, you know, he was definitely a weapon. Well, you, you didn't have the luxury that, that the, uh, the Ike Hilliers of the world had, which is when they lined up in the slot and to run that corner post, there was a linebacker from Tennessee covering them. Right. They, <laughs> they kind of changed that. They figured, they, that they figured out to put a nickel back out there and match it up. Exactly. All right, number three on either or, bigger thrill, hitting a home run or throwing a touchdown pass, and you're one of the few people that has done both at a professional level. Uh, I've yet to do either. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I, I think it's – throwing a touchdown pass. That's why I decided to play football. I mean, baseball is a great sport, but it doesn't have the, uh, you know, the aura that football has. And football is just such a team sport. And, you know, baseball is just a bunch of individuals out there playing. So I would definitely have to say throwing a touchdown pass. Okay, well, one day it's coming for me, I can tell you. I have <laughs> thrown them in the backyard. Uh, number four, and either or, least like to get in a wrestling ring with Ann Bowden or Mark Mangino. I would definitely – Probably wouldn't want to get in the in the ring right now with Miss Bowden just because She's angry. everybody's attacking her <laughs> husband, and you don't mess with you know a wife of a of a husband that's getting attacked right now. So the other guy, you know, I can just just run, run around from him. He'd never <laughs> be able to catch me. So I would I would probably have to say Miss Bowden. But what if he did? It then a, it would be ugly. It'd be a bad deal. And he'd yeah. just lay on you, and that'd be it. would be, be all. It, I mean, every bit of the breath in your body would be gone. Fat man's revenge here, okay? <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for either or. We're going to come back with Dr. Football's email bag first. So, Doug, thanks so much for coming thanks, by. Pat. Thank you. We'll be right back. All right, as usual, we're going to see what's in Dr. Football's email bag. We brought Mike Pouncey in just to do that. How about that? All right, dear Dr. Football, someone sent me your article about the 1984 Gator team. What a great team it was. Thanks for remembering them and their accomplishments. They are very deserving of this recognition. Elaine, myself, and many, many Gator fans, thank you. Sincerely, Galen Hall. Now, it's not a question, but I, when I got this email, I wanted to share it with you. I wrote a column last week about the 1984 team that has kind of been forgotten in Florida. I understand taking them off the wall because of the, of the issues you have there with all those championships and there was probation. But the 84 team, let's go play it off right now. I'll take that team. And 25th anniversary last week of them winning the first ever SEC championship. 91, great accomplishment, first one that counted, but 84 is the first one. And I just wanted to share with you that, that not only Galen, but players from that team, fans of that team, I've been bombarded with emails, people happy that I was able to recognize them. I'm never letting that team go. And it's funny because when Kerwin Bell told me that 
when they took the 84 down from the wall, he started wearing his championship ring. Because they got rings, and somewhere over at Florida, there's a trophy. Nobody knows where, but it's over there. All right, that's going to do it for this week's Pat Dooley Show. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we will be back next time with a look at the SEC championship. Big week next week. Until then, Pat Dooley saying so long from the Sunshine State. Thank <laughs> you.